Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm here with Honorable Marlon Penn, representative of the A District. My brother, good to see you. Good to see you, Ajuanga. Yeah, man. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Yeah. Don't, 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 don't lose your, your, dap, your dap sub. No, man, no. <laughs> your dap sub is very important. Stay local. Yeah, stay local. <laughs> Yeah, we were, we just had a, a, a really great discussion very with good, uh, very good two discussion. members of uh, the education department, the Ministry of Education, uh, Dr. Brody and Ms. Ms. George. And so they're going to start you off on what you're doing for education. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as infrastructure in the yeah. district, in the district, yeah. uh, you know, how are you? How, how, I mean, I think what, 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 I, what I need to do is I need to go down perhaps uh, ministry by ministry yeah. and and see what uh, what 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 you have been doing in the in the okay. in the aid district over the last couple of years that you've been representing us uh, but yes uh, since I've been talking about education yeah, start what, uh, yeah what infrastructure developments in education what what are some of the things that you've been doing and and, and in that category in the aid district well first of all um, at I want to thank you for having me here this evening I want to say good evening to the listening of you in the public, um, especially the, um, the audience from the 8th District. I want to thank you again for posing the confidence in me to represent you in the Second House of Assembly. Uh, uh, education, like you said, it was a really good discussion to see where um, we're taking education system. Uh, the minister has been very busy uh, since taking office in 2011 in terms of trying to, to move the education um, to a culture, creating a culture of excellence is his motto uh, as it relates to education. And he's also been working closely with myself um, as it relates to Willow Wheatley and the Frasa Lesson Primary School, which is, is, is known to be the seven districts um, school, but it's, it's situated in the um, A district. Is that something in the A yeah. district as well? Well, it's, it's in Greenland, which is the A district. Okay, but I mean above the boundaries. <laughs> yes, yes. It's actually geographically in the A district, but it's. Um, it's um, okay. it's known to be in the in seven, seven district. Seven yeah. district. Okay. So I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but but we've been um, been doing a lot of work as far as with this concern. Um, when we took office 2011, one of the things as far as education, we we looked at revitalizing or fixing the infrastructure at Willow Whitley Primary School. Uh, we've made some significant improvements to that school. We've added um, air conditioned units to keep the, um, the, um, the the rooms a little more cooler. There was a complaint about. Um, it's been very warm in some of the classrooms, so we've made those upgrades. Additionally, we've also uh, repaired some fencing around the facility that, were, um, well, that was um, damaged, so we repaired those fencing. Uh, we also did some major repairs to the restroom facilities there at, at the school um, under the minister's guidance. And additionally, we made some, um, we, we dusted off some plans and, and did some redesign for the um, old staff room. The staff room that was, was demolished and we are actually in the process of getting that project moving with a view of getting that project completed in 2014. So we've been doing a lot of work as it relates to education and specifically the infrastructure of the Willow Whitley Primary School and, and getting that, um, that structure to, you know, to the to an institution that, you know, that, that, that bears the name of Willa Whitley. He needs to be, you know. A great educator. A great educator. And, and, and a great leader. And, exactly. and, and leader, yeah. So we need to, the, the building and the infrastructure needs to represent that. But I also, also want to say that um, in terms of the teacher that are Willa Whitley Primary School, I don't know if you know in the last recognition um, ceremony that the minister had for the teachers, Willa Whitley Primary School was ranked the number one primary school within the territory for last really? year. Amongst uh, and, and, and it was rated by its peers, and the principal, Miss Edith Penn Charles, was rated the number one principal by her by her peers. So and, it says and that. And how was that determined? I don't know the criteria that was used, mm -hmm. but I think they used the, the the teachers voted. I don't okay. know specifically the criteria, but but Willow Whitley came up on top in two categories. Well, that's, that's so it good. says okay. once the infrastructure is in place, we have the capacity in terms of the intellectual capacity to move that school to where it needs to be in terms of the top school in territory. That's what I'm pushing for. Okay. Yeah, so. Anything cultural uh, in in the, in the district uh, with, with 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 young people and, and you know in recreation yeah. and getting yeah. them uh, a place to go after school yeah. and and having you know structured play yeah. in, 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 in a good environment to, to you know express themselves yeah. in their free time well, well you know um, when I one of the, the, the key things for us was the the closing of the um, the Greenland field mm -hmm. 
And when we um, took office, that field was in a deplorable state. It was, it was, it was in a state of disrepair. The community was out of recreational <coughs> facility for over three to four years, almost um, at, at that time after taking office. So we worked quickly to get that field restored. I think within our first year, we were able to restore the Greenland field to the state of prominence that it had once had, and, and it, the role it played as far as you know, giving our young people in our community an avenue, an outlet, somewhere to go through mm -hmm. sports and sports development. And I think that was, that was something that we, we were proud of uh, when we had that opening um, on, or in 2012, when we had that opening of the Greenland Field. It's something that, you know, that, like I said, we were proud of and we, we pushed and we campaigned hard about getting that facility up and running. You, yeah. um, additionally, um, I, I'll take a step back. Um, one of the things that we did when I took office is that we created what we call a district council. Because I thought it was important for the community to have a say or a voice in the development of the community. So we enlisted um, a group of young people, young old, in between persons from within our community. And we had discussions in terms of how are we going to move forward as far as development of the community is concerned. Um, we, we looked at six broad areas as in terms of the district council. It was um, education and social development, heritage and cultural identity, sports and youth development, healthy and health and safety, environment and economic, economic and infrastructure. Um, on the cultural side of it, um, we enlisted, I enlisted the assistance of Miss uh, uh, Educator, Miss um, the call her um, Leticia, Leticia Rogers. Mm -hmm. um, we call her Baba uh, mm -hmm. in terms of that we need to put a summer program together, not just the usual babysitting type summer program, but a summer program where our, our children could learn and take something away from um, you know, their, their activities over the summer. And we put together what we call a cultural summer program, which went out very well in the community for both Eastern and Lalo community. We had over, well over 200 students participate in that program that year. And what happened in the, in the program? Lots of <coughs> things. We had health assistance from Clifton Thomas from our community. We had assistance from, from um, Teacher Jenny, um, Teacher Claudia, and several other um, persons from within our community assisted us in terms of teaching a lot of the cultural things of the past. They, they did cooking, they did baking, they did fish pot making, fish making. Mm -hmm. they did mixing of, of traditional juices and that type of thing. And, and um, we, Teacher Claudia makes um, straw, did straw hats, and, 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 they yes. did that. I mean, I, I know Ken Doy mother was one of those persons that participated as well. So it was a really, really, really educational um, program that we put on this year. And I want to commend Ms. Leticia Rogers and her team for doing such a, a great job um, and in terms of putting that program together. We also had a situation where they went and they did um, sales around the, um, the, so they could see the islands up close and personal, so they could you know, oh, tell a little bit of the history of the sailing islands. In, yep, okay, and they went to a lot of that the, was they, they even came to the House of Assembly at one meeting, okay. and they were able to see, um, see us in process as far as the, the procedure and the process yeah. really to the I, House I, I can put chance, but I have it to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me yet. <laughs> because I, I play uh, basketball. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't say play basketball. I, I don't play, I don't play, exercise. I, I, I don't really play basketball. <laughs> but I exercise. Uh, I exercise on, on, on the basketball court uh -huh. with the kids. And I don't know what the contractor was thinking about. <laughs> you understand? Putting them big rack around the, um, around the court. And I encourage it. I put that in a spot right here on national mm -hmm. TV to get them rock stone from around that coat, yeah. post haze. Yes. And put something else down there. I don't know why you're going to put it down there. I, know mm -hmm. I, I actually went as far as going online and doing some, resor um, some research on surfaces mm -hmm. that you can put around basketball court. And there are numerous rubber, uh, cost effective uh, rubber surfaces that you could surround the basketball court with that are safe. Uh, uh, and, 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 and comfortable for the children to, to fall on and mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, yeah. fully express themselves when, they, when, 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 when they're playing. I'm, I'm really afraid of the danger yeah. of the stones around the, uh, the basketball yeah. court, and I think, and I really need to get that yeah. uh, straightened up. So I, I want to put you on the spot on yeah, national TV. Yes, yes, I accept that, um, <laughs> I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hazard for the young people out of the court. Uh, we've I've had discussion with the chairman of the Recreation Trust, Regarding that, those um, stones and having them removed, I've um, also spoken to the minister who's assured me that they will be removed. So we're working to get that 
those materials removed from the facility and put something that is a little more safe and conducive yeah, to the yes, environment. There's a lot of rubber yeah. surfaces yeah. that, um, you know, you see in playgrounds up and down all over the wall yeah. to uh, cushion falls yeah. and to, to, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we need to have something like that. Yeah, quite right. And yeah. we're we, we, we yeah. we going to address that, that okay. situation. Well, good. Uh, uh, and, okay, going forward now in, 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 in uh, terms of uh, education and culture in the, in, 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 in the, in the, year, in the year ahead, uh, you have any uh, any 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 plans for the future in that area? Yeah, we're looking at some a few things as far <coughs> as, as as I mentioned earlier the um, the staff room that has been promised to that institution for well over six to eight years, and and mm -hmm. they've been waiting for an improved um, conducive environment uh, for the teachers to to congregate to 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 um, have discussions and, and do what they have to do as far as um, planning for the for the future of our, our country, which is our young people. And I think we're, 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 there's long overdue, and we're moving, moving that project forward. The minister assured me that that's one of the initiatives that he's pushing forward for 2014. And we're hopeful to get that facility up and running, because um, they're right now in a cramped situation at that school, and they deserve better. Yeah. You know, libraries is a, is, a, is a, I don't know if libraries are becoming obsolete, <coughs> or it's just that our libraries are so outdated yeah. that, um, it, it, it's boring to go to, to, yeah. to, you, to, to, to the library uh, now, you know. Uh, wh what are we going to do about, you know, our library? We have a nice little library there, Long Swamp. What, what are we going to do with about our library? We, we have some ideas as far as what we can do with the library facilities. It's something that is on my agenda. Um, I, I'm ha I've had discussions with the minister in terms of making improvements to that library facility to make it more conducive for even the elderly persons want to come to the library. It's, it's comfortable. Um, it's not too much hassle for them to get to the library. We're looking at even looking at um, online uh, catalogs, those type of things uh, in terms of the library. I don't know if you see the work that the minister has done with the Beaver High School Library and how that's transformed um, the, 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 the campus there at, at, at um, Elmo Stout High School. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking along those lines in terms of more modern type library and make some improvements to our library services as well. So, so that is in the pipeline, you know, funding permits. Of course, we want to look at um, major improvements as it relates to our library services in our district. Okay. Now, <coughs> you, I saw on the, in, the, in, the, in the papers and, uh, and, and I heard on the radio about your Greenland yeah. project development. You know the people are going to uh, beat you up because you're going to go start a big <laughs> giant project yeah. and you're still in finish the sewage, yes, uh, finish yes. the sewage yes. uh, project. So I don't understand how, where your priority is at. <laughs> Good question. I mean, my priorities uh, are very clear, um, mm -hmm. Eduenka. The sewage is, is, is number one priority for us as it relates to addressing that issue within the Eastern Isle community. But an opportunity, opportunity presented itself as, as far as this um, development is concerned. As I mentioned earlier, um, the District Council, one of the things that we also did as a District Council is we looked at economic and infrastructural development, where we can look for other avenues outside of government to do developments within our community and stimulate the local economy in terms of construction and the socioeconomic development of our community. Um, one of the ideas that, that came once we, when we did our research was the whole issue of the FIFA and the FIFA Gold Project. And we, FIFA meaning? The, um, the <coughs> Football Federation of the National Football Association. Mm -hmm. um, that's the governing body of um, football. As you know, football is the number one sport in the world, mm -hmm. most played by more persons than any other sport, mm -hmm. any other team sport. And we had discussion, we started discussions with the BY, BY Football Association, a local branch of CONCACAF, which is the Confederation of North American and North and Central America and Caribbean um, associations that is mm -hmm. associated with um, FIFA, mm -hmm. which is the international governing body. And in our discussion with BY Football, we, we knew that about 10 years ago, they were, spit, they were pitching this idea of developing one of the gold projects within the Beaver. I think the Beaver is one of only two um, nations from the CONCACAF region that have not taken advantage of this gold project, where people would come into the Caribbean nations, give a grant to develop facilities within those, those specific areas. And we thought it was important for us to, to try to see if that opportunity still existed and if we could participate in that opportunity. After a discussion with Mr. Andy Bickerton, who we've been working with for the past year in terms of working on the logistics of this, and he expressed that it's still an interest. They're still interested in developing and spending some of that grant money in the BVI. And we, we discussed a plan, a plan of action for moving forward. 
It's so um, important not just to develop a stadium that only facilitates football, but encompass or complements what we have at the Greenland facility. So we looked at the fact that we don't currently have a netball court, which was there previously, and we had to get a netball court for the, the women in our community who've played netball for many, many years mm -hmm. and, have, and actually fought very hard to get a facility over on Greenland, and we've displaced them now for the past six years. So we looked at that, and we looked at the fact that the track in Rotong is being, currently we have, we're in a process where we're going to have to replace the surface. It's under warranty, but it's, it's, it's being replaced because of the over wear and tear. Mm -hmm. so there's, a, there's a level of wear and tear on that facility where many persons are, are using it for recreational use and as well competition and training. Mm -hmm. So we needed to, so I looked at a possibility of having a second, a second facility, not to, to, um, to, to take over what is being done in Rotong as far as competition, but to create a second option where persons could train, um, exercise, and all those type of things in, within, within our community. You know our community is, is, is actually the largest community in the entire territory. And not only that, we've had the reputation in terms of track and field for having the top athletes in track and field. Mm. We have all the top records in the territory. National records are held by persons from Eastern Lalo community. What you say? We have the 400 meter was held by Dean Grenaway. I think it's 46 <coughs> seconds. Mm -hmm. We have the 1 and 200 meter record, which is held by Dion Crabb. We have the long jump record, I think, is held by Ralston Balak. I don't know if you know uh, Ralston, mm -hmm. you remember Ralston, mm -hmm. who was away in the U.S. And he actually works for Mondo, who is the, the company that does the, the installation of tracks. Mm -hmm. So that's what he does now as a career now. So we, we, we looked at all those aspects, we brought them together, and we brought a proposal together that FIFA bought into. They said, look, we, you know, we understand that you have to do more for the community. They were okay with moving forward with, this, with a proposal to include track and field, football, international size football stadium, and a netball court. And we also looked at developing parking. You know, right now there's a congestion situation right now in that community. When there's an event on Greenland, there's nowhere to park. So persons line the streets, create a congestion, and there's no, there's no in and no out. Mm -hmm. So we looked at <coughs> expanding, which was already in the plans, to expand the Greenland field for parking, which is, which is going to create another 150 parking spots, in addition to a sub, some spillover park, and behind the stadium is another 50 spots to create a um, sort of a, a, um, a national stadium type environment <coughs> for the community. And we also looked at um, developing a bypass road for emergency purposes that goes around the Francis Lesson Primary School. So FIFA, FIFA is actually funding this project? Yeah, FIFA is... FIFA. How much, how much, how much are, the, are the money are they um, putting in? FIFA is funding to the tune of $1.5 million. Uh, of the, of the, the, the project is, is, is a roughly about $2.5, $2.75 million. And FIFA is putting in $1.5 plus te technical expertise. And I also got a call today from, from Jose Conneris, I think his name is, who, who he's the president of Peru's Olympic Committee, who heard about the project and, and he wanted, there's a meeting in St. Thomas currently with the IOC's Olympic Committees of the region, and he heard about the project and he's interested in participating with us to, um, to bring technical ex expertise and to lend his support wherever he can in terms of the facilities. So we're having a lot of donations in kind in terms of expertise and, and so forth um, to get this project moving. Well, oh. certainly that's an ex uh, exciting project, and particularly for me from the perspective of uh, the, the national strategy for the prevention of non-communicable yeah. chronic diseases. We're going to need facilities yeah. to exercise for people to, to get into activity in proper diet to reduce yeah. their, 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 depend <coughs> their, their potential for uh, contracting uh, these, these, the, developing these, these non-communicable chronic diseases. So yeah. that's certainly a good, yeah. a good, a good fit. Yeah, in, in 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 the community. So you, so I guess uh, you you had to take advantage oh, of that, that opportunity. Yes, we had before to. it passed. So okay. it's not a question then of a priority. It's question of of, 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 of of necessity. Exactly, and and, <coughs> and it ties in nicely into what we're trying to do in terms of that area. It creates what we call a a, a sporting corridor, and, and and to facilitate the whole development in terms of um, sports tourism. And the premier always speak about the possibilities as it relates to sports tourism and those economic opportunities. And you just mentioned a, a key point, um, Edgy Winker, the whole social aspect and the whole mm -hmm. issue of non-communicable diseases. To tie into all of this, we've also looked at, uh, we're currently in the process of doing a refurbishment of the gym, the gym facility in the community center. 
which is being donated by uh, Nagico. Um, they donated <coughs> the, the new equipment to totally refurbish the gym. And we're looking at the possibility of the development of the, the poly clinic in East Island Lala community. Mm -hmm. So you have the facility, you have Greenland Field, you have the gym, you have the clinic. There's numerous opportunities here for, for, for sports uh, medicine, sports medicine. Mm -hmm. Persons could come to this facility, be rehabilitated, go to the clinic, use the facility for rehabilitation. You have the gym as well, and, and equipment in the gym that they could use as well. Physiotherapists could, could use this, this who, area. Who owns, who owns the gym? The gym is owned by government. And, 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 and who is, somebody is running it? It's, uh, it's, you have to have a membership? Because yeah. somebody complained to me that, uh, that the gym um, seemed to be uh, privately owned and operated and, and, and they felt restricted and, 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 and have an opportunity to use it. I, I, so I'm wondering if that could be cleared up. No, that's, that's not accurate. Okay. The, the gym is owned own solely by government owns the, the, the premises. The, the and the equipment? The equipment is, is donated. I think, I know the, the farmer, the representative of the seven district have over over years have donated um, funds to, to furnish equipment. Like I said, Najiko is now donating mm -hmm. a, a huge, making a huge contribution to... to so um, anyone could go to the anyone gym? Anyone could, could do the gym, the but gym. there's a structure. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a group of persons who from the community who, who took up the, the whole running and, and managing and maintenance of the gym. They're the ones who've kept it going for this long mm -hmm. to ensure that it's there for persons to use. You so have you to, just fit it to the schedule? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a structure. You have to go and get a membership. You have to pay dues. I mean, th I mean these people have to maintain this facility. There are costs associated and, 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 and you know, and, uh, so, so I know it's been, I, I, I myself as a member, I pay my I dues when, mm -hmm. I, when I go in and, and it's, it's just a well run facility. I have, to, I have to give it up to the guys who are doing it, who took that responsibility to get that facility to where it is, to where it's going to be now with a new refurbishment in terms of the equipment. But, um, but, but I know the Minister of Health is, is looking at, uh, at the whole entire reform in terms of how these facilities are run and how they are managed. So he's, 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 he's putting a policy in place to, to, to guide the running and management of gyms within our territory. Yeah. Okay, we have to take a break forward from our sponsors. We're going to yeah. come right back. Uh, I'm going to talk about... Uh, the, the, the waterfront development in East End because I'm noticing every final at 3 o'clock and there's so much stuff to discuss yeah. about what's happening in the A district. I, we may not get to all of it, so we might have to have you back again to continue the discussion. But there's some key areas yes, that I think we need, we need to get in. Uh, keep it locked right in the spot. I'll be right back with the, um, the representative for the A district, Honorable Marlon Penn. Spotlight is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Clarence Thomas Limited, the BVI Tourist Board, and CCT Global Communications. Welcome back to Spotlight. Before, before we go to, to the Waterfront Project, I think we need to get an update on the sewage project, the sewage mm -hmm. project, the, you know, the, the Eastern Long Road sewage project. Where, where is that now? At what stage in that in development? And do we got any, any hope of having that completed? Yes. Well, uh, quick, quick update. I know we, we have we're short for time, so switch could, could be a two hours discussion. Yeah. But um, in terms of a quick update, you know, we started the project in earnest once we took office. We mm -hmm. decided that the project is too important to play politics, mm -hmm. to stop the project. So we kept the project moving in terms of the plan that was in place. So we, we've installed all the residential lines in Parham Town, Major Bay, and James Young. So all the, the residential lines that were in plan for those areas have been installed. Where so we, that means that mean the lines have gone to the houses? All the, all the, the, the core, the core veins mm -hmm. for that, that would connect to the homes but are the, installed. But the, home, but the homes have not been, have been have not connected yet. yet. Okay, no. all right. Uh, those have been installed. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, what we've done since is that we've put out the tender, the main line. This is the main artery that goes from Chapel Hill to Parakita Bay. Mm -hmm. We've done that in segments. So it's a major undertaking, so we've done it in segments. The first segment will go from Chapel Hill to Parham Town. That, that has been tendered. The tenders are in. I think there's probably going to be a, um, there's gonna be a decision soon as far as cabinet is concerned in terms of who would be the contractor to construct that, that work. Once that is done, we're moving forward getting that work done. But what I have done in the interim, and because I, 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 I go to Greenland and I see the, 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 the horror that the people of the Greenland have, have been dealing with for, for some time now, it's, it's, it's really overbearing mm -hmm. for years. what the people of Greenland have, have had to put up with mm -hmm. for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I, 
I, I had discussion with the Minister of, of, um, of Works about the possibility of us doing something temporary in that Greenland community to, to get that, that, that facility, a temporary facility in place to treat the runoff that's occurring currently in Greenland. Uh, the Minister agreed, the Minister of Finance, or Premier, agreed as well for us to move forward at, with that. We've since installed um, a structure. I made a mistake the other day when I did um, the story in terms of the, in the contractor that did it. It was Biosafe who did that installation mm -hmm. of, that, um, of that facility in Greenland. Uh, we have the facility in place right now. We're currently going through, uh, going, up, going through the planning for the connection of the homes in Greenland that we know are the ones that are the main culprits of the runoff. Okay. The, the reality is, Crom, um, Cromwell, is that you have about less than five homes in, in, in Greenland that are the main contributors to that runoff that's, that's occurring um, on street. the roads in, 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 in the Greenland area. Okay. And it's something that, that... So you're in the process of getting those, uh, those houses, those homes connected to the new... Um, the new treatment plan treatment that will plan, be installed. And that, that will put an end to at least to the that, runoff, the runoff that, that, that particular that area. runoff in that area. In that and area. we're hopeful that we can get that done by the first quarter of next year. We're hoping to get it done by the end of the year. But you know when Christmas comes around and mm. we, we, everybody seems to be on a go slow. As, as we said, uh, we say in East End. Um, so we have to, 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 to take in consideration that the holidays are upon us and all the things okay. that we have to do. So right well. now we're in the process of running the main line uh -huh. from Chapel Hill down to Parentum. That's going to be, the, the, the contractor is going to be chosen so for that in, in the near future. Unless in the next two weeks. In the next two weeks. And that project will start. And, uh, and, and of course, you're planning to make sure that um, people from the Eastern Land Oak area get, to get jobs. Yes, yes, of course. You, you always have to stimulate the economy. The construction economy right now is stagnant, as you know. And, and that's one of the reasons why we're also pushing ahead with that um, the stadium development as well. It creates economic opportunity within our community, okay. our construction opportunity. And and so so and so then and after that from Chapel Hill to Greenland, then we're going from Greenland down, down, down to Long Swamp, to Long Swamp and, and all the way down to the Bay. Yeah. So that's that's where we are now as far as as far as the sewage is concerned. Concern. So okay. And uh, as far as the treatment, the so sewage treatment plant in Parakita Bay, it's still there. Is, uh, is that's another issue. That's another issue with Bywater. Water there was there was some agreement from the previous government where Bywater was contracted to do the installation of that facility. So, uh, so, so we wait. So we wait until we that for that, that to happen. happen. But in the meantime, that's that's that's, that's what, what we're doing as far as sewage is concerned. Okay. Now, um, people are not saying that you know, Long Bay Beach, Before Island, uh, has been there for many many years, and you still don't have a place to change. You don't have a place to rest yourself, you, you know, and, and, and certainly you're going to get blows for that. Yes, I, I, I get some blows, but I think we've done a lot of work as it relates to Long Bay Beach's concern. I don't know if you've been there recently and mm -hmm. see, and I've seen the transformation. That we've we, seen a nice clean yeah, open yeah, area yeah, we, and yeah. you've got, got picnic that's areas yeah, yeah. and you've got more inland Lens, space yeah. now than you had that's before. Right. Yeah. Yes, I've seen that. And that's the first phase. Mm -hmm. That's the first phase that we, 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 we created that, that improved ambience of the beach because the beach was littered with trash and, and all type of debris. And we thought it was important to clean up the place for us and get the place looking um, presentable. And now the next step of, of, of our plan is to now develop a sort of a master plan for the rest areas that you're talking about, the central entertainment space and more of the community spaces that we want to put on that, on, on that facility. We're talking about restrooms and et cetera. So that persons could have somewhere to change and relieve themselves if, you know, because the beach is now more popular as it relates to entertainment than it was before now that mm -hmm. the, the, the new space that we've created in terms of the cleanup and how, how it's well. And then we also, I want need to also add that we also have persons who are there now regularly maintaining that facility. So it, it's constantly maintained. The, the, the bush and the shrubs are constantly um, um, raked, raked and, 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 and disposed of. So it's a constant maintenance process that we've put in place to ensure that we just don't clean it up and leave it to, go, to, to get, get dirty again. Dirty and again. Just, just leave it leave so. It so. And yeah. we have uh, mm -hmm. someone who is stationed and uh, about two, three persons we're trying to put there to do that. I don't know if you've also seen what we've done to, to Trailers Bay. We've also mm -hmm. done a similar process over at Trailers Bay where we've done that, the whole revitalization of the entire Beef Island, um, Long Bay Beef Island um, community. So we've done an entire revitalization. We've, we've put um, proper entranceway into the beaches. I don't know if you've seen that, to down a little mountainside on the main entrance to the beach. Mm -hmm. By the Dawson's property, we've done some improvements outside of their property as well, you know, to make the place more presentable. We also have persons who are, who are in place to constantly maintain Beef Island and Trailers Bay. 
and you see those guys are there cutting those areas constantly. That is a popular area for persons who walk and exercise in our community. Yes, yes. So it, we thought it was important for us to keep that place, that area maintained, well maintained and manicured so that um, our residents who walk on a, on a daily basis, many in the mornings well, and, yes. and some in the evenings, have a safe and clean environment to walk, exercise. Not only that, Trellis Bay serves as the gateway for our outer islands, right. our tourism, our tourism product, so to speak. Our Island, Scrub Virgin Island, Gada, Virgin Gada, Guana Island, Guana Island, Island all, of the, all of those islands use Trailers Bay as, as, mm -hmm. their, as their terminal of, 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 of exit and entry mm -hmm. um, back and forth um, for, for their tourists and their guests. And you need to have a pleasant environment. You know, the way Trailers Bay was before was, it was really unsightly. Mm -hmm. you know, and we created a, a, a housing area as well for persons and locals and, and visitors who are going to Virgin Gada. You know, now Speedy has a, a 10 o'clock ferry mm -hmm. and he has an earlier ferry that leaves from the, the Tartola Wharf, as they call it. So we created a safe area where persons could, could go, shelter from the rain, etc. So they could, you know, when they're waiting on Speedy's bus to come, and we've lit the area more mm -hmm. so that we could have, you know, person could be not, could be, feel safe in that, in that area, in that environment. Okay. Now, the, 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 the a couple of, we got a couple of uh, seconds. The waterfront project that's been there from time I born. <laughs> and before I born. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely before you born. <laughs> yes, okay. yes. So, mm. I mean, are we ever going to get that done? We can I, get I, anything done with that. I envision that we are going to get some work done with that. I don't know. And I, I know that yeah. we the people of the, of the A yeah. district are the, the, probably the biggest obstacle in terms of, yeah. of, of land, land yeah. use distribution. It's, it's, a big, it's a big challenge in that project. It's a challenge, but, but there's some things that we could do as a government. And mm -hmm. we, we started the process of getting those things done. We're looking at the possibility of getting Red Bay Dock started next, next, next year, 2014, with a view to have that dock refurbished, redone the whole area um, fixed and, and, um, and upgraded. That is a major thing. You know, fishing is one of our main industries. The, the Minister of Natural Resources and Labor is pushing very hard to make fishing one of our next economic pillars. And we need facilities like Red Bay Dock and the adjacent terminal to make that happen. One of the things that we did, I know you're, you're aware of Ella Reef. You know, when your, <laughs> yes, your father yes. was, a, was a fisherman yes. um, back in the day and then he had his aquarium where yes. we all of us used to see all those, those um, very various species of fishes fish. there, fish and that aquarium. What we've done is that the Ellery Channel that was blocked for, for years now, that project mm -hmm. has been on the table for now over 10 years, well over 10 years. We've opened back up that channel. Now there's a steady, steady stream of water coming through the channel. Mm -hmm. It's flushing the harbor. And, and, I have, and I have to say, like from my house, you can see the I, improvement. I, 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 I can see the water clearer. Yeah, there's a, what we've, had, what mm -hmm. we've done is that we've had um, the environmentalists come test the water quality and it's significantly improved. Now you see, when we were growing up, when you were growing up, we used to jump off Red Bay yeah, and swim yeah. in the water. We yeah. couldn't do that in recent years because of the sewage and other, mm -hmm. other, other issues of water quality. Mm -hmm. You weren't unable to do that. I saw my son swimming in, on, on Red Bay the other day. My son he has him now participating in the whole Red Bay jumping out situation. Now my Sam, there, there's a, a little dock by, um, over by Sam where a lot of the, the younger the younger, younger mm -hmm. kids that go there and the go down and swim now because we had to ensure that the water quality was good enough for them to go into the water and they've been tested. We have a regular process of testing our water quality and, and, and it's good for the kids to swim now. So, so we, it's, it's made some significant uh, improvement. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's great for sure because them are the good old days. Yes, the good old days. The good yeah. old days. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the waterfront, we gonna get. What we gonna get done with the waterfront? Any, any, anything? Hopefully, Red Bay Dock. Uh, well, we, we, I know. I mean, um, don't follow down. Well, I know. I know we got some illegal. We got some illegal uh, landfill there. Yeah, and we got some on. challenges yeah. with, 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 with that. Yeah. But I mean, as far as I know, I know the fishing area. But as far as other economic development yeah. along the uh, the shoreline, yeah. I noticed down uh, that Chadwell is developing. Yeah, his his, uh, his, 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 marina. His, his marina, and of course we had Eddie's marina there. Yeah. Uh, that I think is uh, looking to show some signs it's of life. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, is there any massive plan being uh, developed for there? There's one already. And yeah. uh, there was a plan that, that was in place for some time now. We're looking, I know the minister is looking at, at the possibilities in terms of that development. I know one of the things that the minister is keen on is, with, is the restoration of the beach in, um, in Fat Augs, in, in Fat Augs Bay down by mm -hmm. the Malone, my family, the Malone's um, property down there. I know they're looking at that restoration. I know the minister's in some discussion, so I, I don't want to preempt anything that the minister might want to discuss or say on that project in terms of that moving forward. But as far as the, the district side of it, um, we're working to get the fisherman dock in place and get that up and running. 
Well, that would, that would, that would be great because uh, I'm, I'm in full support of fishing being a third economic pillar, and I can see that taking off um, uh, right away, if, especially if we get some, uh, the fact that when you, know, when you come in with your catch 24 hours yeah. Yeah. a day, you could go to the, to the, to the, and drop off your fish and get paid on the spot. Yeah. I think that, that's, that, that's, that's a key, that's yeah. a key uh, component of the development of that industry that I'd like to see mm. uh, co uh, come in place. Again, uh, as part of the district council, you see the district council is working feverishly at work. Mm -hmm. We had discussions with a few members of um, the community in terms of farming and fishing co-op. Mm -hmm. So we've already drafted potential bylaws and structure how this co-op could work. We essentially we want the fishermen in our community to own the fishing. Are we product. buying in though? Are the fishermen in the community buying into the to the, to the, minister, the minister's uh, request for a, a third economic pillar in fishing being that uh, economic pillar? Because Eastern was full of fishermen. Fisher, yeah, yeah, and it's still are. And I, 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 I think I think are we buying in? Are they they coming on board? You know, because I know they had some mistrust, some reservations, some reservations, and, and so on. Are we getting them to, to, to get any movement in that area? I think we're getting there. Um, the the child is now on on actually number one, one of the top fishers fishermen now in that community, and a lot of the other um, um, older guys who used to do that still do it. I know um, Frank Smith and, and his yes. son Gary, and they still do it. Up to yesterday, I saw them with a, with a catch that they brought in in terms of the same fishing side of it. I think it's, it's going to be slow. You know, we are, we, as a people, we, we tend to be skeptical uh, of these ideas as far as where they mm -hmm. come. I think we just have to continue the dialogue and, and, and show the fishermen that this is about you. It's not that the government wants to take over your business, but we want you to run it. We want to help you put the structures in place, operational structures and the financial structures to help you to, to, to expand your business and, and, and do more, um, more, more than you're doing now as far as um, bringing the catch. There's so many possibilities as it relates to fishing. Fishing is an $80 billion a year industry worldwide. Mm. And the BVI has what, they, what we call the third largest barrier reef in the world. And we have so much uh, endless supply, endless stream of, of, of all type of species of fish out there. And we need to, to really capitalize on that in a, in a real way. And, uh, and as uh, financial, so financial services become more under attack from the yeah. international community, we, we need, we need for, some for, something to supplement our yeah, income. Yeah, certainly for our survival, yeah. uh, we're going to need. Well, I'm afraid they'll be under the o'clock. Oh, that's and that's I, how it is sometimes. I think, you, you, you know, you, you, win, you seem to be working hard, you know. Yeah, you're, 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 you know, you're a cool, relaxed fellow. You don't make a whole lot of noise. I just, but, do, I just do my work. That's all but, I do. Uh, you yeah. seem to be, you seem yeah. to be working hard. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know it if you don't come and say something. Exactly. That's, that's why I'm here. So, so I hope here. to see you on a regular basis to give us regular updates so we don't have to update everything at once. I agree. But hopefully you can get a chance to come back and continue our discussion about some of the other things um, going on uh, and, and, and it's then like, you know, the, the, the cleanup uh, projects and, you know, and, and, and environment cleanup and yes. keeping the place uh, looking good. Um, the infrastructural stuff in, that we're infra doing. In, infrastructural things that, 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 that is, is, is happening there. Uh, you know, so we'll be looking forward to, yeah. to, to having you back. So yeah. don't sell away so long. I, I'll try I not don't, to. Don't, don't be, I, I don't know why the politicians like <laughs> fill, fill the a, media. It's like I'm scared not afraid. to come out. And yeah. tell the people why what they're doing. I mean, only, you should be scared to come out if you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you're working hard, you need to come out and say. Let the people know. Let yeah, people I know agree. what it is you're doing. And so I want to congratulate you for, um, you know, for, for the, the work that you've been doing and for coming and providing uh, this update. Good to see you. Yeah, good. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, Very good. All cool. Right. Yes, indeed. That was a conversation with uh, Honorable Marilyn Penn representative for the the A district and uh, certainly uh, as, 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 as you've heard there's quite a bit going on in the district. As a matter of fact I didn't realize there was so much stuff happening in the in the A district. But uh, it, uh, we, 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 we're doing okay and looking forward to continued development there. Uh, thank you for uh, watching Spotlight, of course. Spotlight is seen Tuesdays at 8 p.m. here on JTV Channel 55 and rebroadcast Sunday afternoons at 2.30. You could also look at Spotlight on JTVLive.net for those programs that you've missed. Uh, if you've missed any part of this program, uh, you certainly could catch it at JTV, JTVLive.net. Uh, if you want to do some research and go back to programs months ago or years ago, you could do it on JTV Live. 
.NET. So uh, Spotlight is there on demand as JTV is there on demand. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for your words of encouragement, your criticism. Continue to email me at jtvspotlight at yahoo.com. I'm Major Enka reminding you that when the spotlight is on, you see the facts. Peace and blessings. Spotlight is brought to you by Tortola Concrete Limited, Clarence Thomas Limited, and H. Laverty Stout Community College.